Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on synaptic mechanisms. In this video, what we are going to do is talk about clathrin-mediated endocytosis and the endocytic pathway. Okay, so that's the title for this video. Clathrin-mediated endocytosis and the endocytic pathway. And we're specifically looking at this process which is occurring in the axon terminal of neurons. So clathrin-mediated endocytosis, endocytosis, and the endocytic pathway. Okay, so the structure for this video then, we will start by looking at um, clathrin-mediated endocytosis, so the different portions of the clathrin-mediated endocytosis pathway. And then what we'll do is look at the endocytic pathway. So, um, firstly, let me just define for you what the difference between clathrin-mediated endocytosis and the endocytic pathway is. So, clathrin-mediated endocytosis is uh, the process by which we can actually um, endocytose some membrane from the cell membrane, basically. The way in which we can uh, pinch off a uh, vesicle's worth of membrane out of the cell membrane, i.e. how we can make this endocytic vesicle. The endocytic pathway is then the pathway which the endocytic vesicle goes down, i.e. what happens to it next. So we'll look at both of these in this video. So we'll begin with clathrin-mediated endocytosis. Okay, right. So, let's begin with the basic setup. So the basic setup is that we need an axon terminal here, okay, and we know that the axon terminal is continually exocytosing synaptic vesicles. So we have a bunch of synaptic vesicles which are docked at the presynaptic membrane of the axon terminal. So let's show these here. Here are these uh, synaptic um, vesicles here, which will be full with neurotransmitters. So let me show the neurotransmitters, little pink dots. Right, so every time an action potential uh, comes down the axon and arrives at the axon terminal, it triggers the exocytosis of these uh, synaptic vesicles which are docked at the presynaptic membrane. And by the way, these synaptic vesicles which are docked at the presynaptic membrane are known as the readily releasable vesicle pool because uh, they are the vesicles which will be released very, very quickly in response to a neurotransmitter, sorry, in response to an action potential arriving in the axon terminal. Therefore, they're called the readily releasable vesicle pool. Okay, right. So, when an action potential does arrive in this axon terminal, we're going to exocytose these synaptic vesicles docked in this readily releasable vesicle pool. And that's going to mean that we fuse the membrane of the synaptic vesicle with the plasma membrane. So what we're going to do is something like so. So we're going to be adding in the, all this membrane that came from the synaptic vesicle. So all of this membrane is new, i.e. we're going to increase the size uh, of the surface area of this axon terminal cell membrane. Okay, now at the same time, when we um, activate the process of exocytosis, we're also going to activate the process of endocytosis. So exocytosis means the release of contents from the cell, so uh, giving um, cellular contents to the external world, exocytosis. So fusing a membrane onto uh, the plasma membrane, okay? Endocytosis refers to the opposite process, the process of taking membrane back out of the plasma membrane and reforming vesicles from it, so endocytosis. So whenever we activate exocytosis of the synaptic vesicles in an axon terminal, we will also activate the process of endocytosis to reform uh, these vesicles that we're going to uh, need in order to replace the uh, readily releasable vesicle pool, which we've just released. Okay, right. So, Endocytosis, then, is the uh, topic for this video, and specifically, we're going to look at a mechanism for endocytosis, which is the mechanism used in axon terminals, which is known as clathrin-mediated endocytosis because of the involvement of the protein clathrin in this process. Okay, so let's begin this process. So, 
let's say we have some sort of uh, target protein within the plasma membrane that tells us that that protein needs to be endocytosed. Okay, so what sort of target protein could it be? Well, uh, an example is synaptobrevin. So we know that in these synaptic vesicles which are docked at the plasma membrane, you have the protein synaptobrevin. So let me show this here. Let's say this is our synaptobrevin protein. Specifically, it's synaptobrevin 2. So let me label this up as synaptobrevin 2, which is a V-snare, a vesicular snare protein, which is very important in the uh, formation of the complex of proteins which docks the uh, synaptic vesicle to the presynaptic membrane. Okay. So, when you fuse the synaptic vesicle membrane with the plasma membrane, what's going to happen is this synaptobrevin 2 is going to end up in the plasma membrane. So this is an example of a protein that's going to need to be re-endocytosed because we want that protein to be in our synaptic vesicles. We need it basically to be in our synaptic vesicles so that we can dock them at the plasma membrane. So if we are re-endocytosing membrane to make more synaptic vesicles, then basically what we're going to have to do is uh, we, we want synaptobrevin 2 to be in there. So we want to make sure that when we undertake this endocytosis process, we are getting synaptobrevin 2 within the membrane that we endocytose. So synaptobrevin 2 would be an example of a target protein. Okay, another example would be the protein synaptobrevin, which is usually synaptobrevin 1 slash 2, which is present also in the uh, membrane of the synaptic vesicles. So here, sorry, not synaptobrevin, synaptotagmin, synaptotagmin 1 slash 2. Okay, so synaptotagmin 1 slash 2 is another protein which is in the membrane of the synaptic vesicles and is really, really important in uh, the exocytosis process. So when calcium goes up in the axon terminal, it activates synaptotagmin 1 slash 2 uh, and then synaptotagmin will fuse the presynaptic membrane with, uh, sorry, the, well, the presynaptic membrane with the synaptic vesicle membrane. Okay, right, so both of these proteins are proteins that are going to end up in the plasma membrane once you have actually fused the synaptic vesicle membrane with the plasma membrane. So these function as target proteins, although we'll see that synaptotagmin 2 or, or synaptotagmin 1 slash 2, and when I put synaptotagmin 1 slash 2 there, I mean synaptotagmin 1 or synaptotagmin 2. So there are 19 different isoforms of synaptotagmin. Uh, 1 and 2 are just certain types of synaptotagmins, okay, and they're the types that are involved generally in uh, synaptic vesicle um, membrane fusion with the presynaptic membrane. Okay, right, so now let's begin the discussion of clathrin-mediated endocytosis. So, let's say here we have our uh, plasma membrane. Okay, so we draw it as a phospholipid by there. And let's say here we have some sort of target protein. And you can imagine that maybe it's synaptobrevin 2 or maybe it's synaptotagmin 1 slash 2. Okay, and we'll draw it in turquoise here. So this is the target protein. And basically, we are going to ensure that when we endocytose some membrane out of the plasma membrane, we're going to make sure that we uh, endocytose this protein within the endocytose membrane. So basically, when we undertake this endocytosis process, it's going to be centered around getting this protein back into the uh, cell within the endocytic vesicle. Okay, so how uh, do we recognize this protein as a protein that needs to be endocytosed? Well, basically, proteins that need to be endocytosed have certain sequences of amino acids which are visible on the intracellular or cytoplasmic domain of their structure, basically. So if this is the extracellular fluid here, so the outside of the cell, ECF for short, extracellular fluid, and this is the cytoplasmic side of the cell here, then the protein has both an extracellular domain here and an intracellular domain here. And on the intracellular of the domain, if you want to be re-endocytosed, you need to have a certain sequence of amino acids plainly visible to proteins in the cytoplasm of the cell. 
Okay, and such a combination of um, amino acids is known as an endocytic motif. Okay, so an endocytic motif is a sequence of amino acids that needs to be visible on the cytoplasmic side of your protein to which more proteins in the cytoplasm combined and will recognize that it means that this target protein needs to be endocytosed. So what examples do we know of endocytic motifs? Well, one example, a very famous example, is the NXXY endocytic motif here. Now, uh, this is written in single letter amino acid code. So N is the single letter amino acid code for the amino acid asparagine. Okay, uh, X is a, um, a letter which doesn't have any amino acid, which means, uh, which it stands for. So X just means that you can put any old amino acid there, so anything, basically. So you can have asparagine uh, peptide linked to any old amino acid, peptide linked to another any old amino acid. And then finally, in this fourth position, Y means tyrosine. Okay, the amino acid tyrosine. So, this is a sequence of amino acids, basically. All you need is an asparagine and then two whatever you want in between. And then you need uh, a tyrosine in position four. And this uh, will uh, tell proteins in the cytoplasm that this protein needs to be uh, endocytosed. Okay, so this is an, end an example of an endocytic motif. Another example of an endocytic motif is N, sorry, not N, get rid of that, is YXX phi, okay? So, Y we already know, that means tyrosine again, so here's tyrosine again. X we know, that means anything. So what is this phi here? Well again, phi is not, uh, has no amino acid for which it stands for. Instead, phi means that you need a bulky hydrophobic amino acid there. So a bulky hydrophobic amino acid. So I don't know specifically what amino acid needs to be there, but it can be any bulky hydrophobic amino acid, and then it will work. So what examples do we know of bulky hydrophobic amino acids? Well, one is phenylalanine, the single letter amino acid code for which is F. So phenylalanine is an example of an amino acid that you could put there. And another example is isoleucine, single letter amino acid code for which is I. Isoleucine. Okay, so both of these codes, these sequences of four amino acids, if you have them blatantly visible on your cytoplasmic uh, domain, then that will act as an endocytic motif, and it will tell proteins in the cytoplasm of the cell that you should be endocytosed, and it will lead to the endocytosis of this target protein. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.